All right. So we have just completed the setup of the reflux for the alcohol esterification lab. In the flask, we have placed our 1.3 approximately grams of the alcohol. We have 2.2 milliliters of glacial acetic and a few drops of the sulfuric acid catalyst. We've also added boiling stones and we've clamped the flask securely over the hot plate and we have it snugly up against the aluminum block so that the heat is effectively transferred. The heat has just been turned on and we're going to turn on the water now so that we have uh, our water jacket and condenser going, making sure that the tubes are nice and tight. Okay, go ahead and turn on the water. All right, so we're gonna then wait for this to come to a boil so we can start our reflux period and we will pick up the video once the reflux has begun. Okay, so now our reflux apparatus is finally um, at reflux conditions where we see that the bu bubbles are coming off vigorously and we have condensation going up into the condenser and then dripping back down. You'll also notice that on the stir plate, stir plate hot plate, we have now this actual heat turned on. Prior In the prior video, we had the stir only turned on, which is not gonna do anything to heat your reaction mixture. So we have now the correct side turned on. We just added five milliliters of water to the final reaction mixture in the tube and it's formed these nice two layers. The upper layer is primarily a product with any leftover alcohol and a little bit of acetic acid. So now we're gonna transfer this to a centrifuge tube very carefully. That's too much dribbling. I guess we could have poured it, but oh well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't want to spill it down the side. This is the best way to avoid getting the the um, boiling stone in there. Good point. Is there any smell to it? Is there smell? It has the smell of vinegar and juicy fruit gum. Okay, so now I've expelled all of the air out of my pasture pipette and put the bulb, uh, put the tip down in the bottom to remove the lower layer. And each time you see that the lower layer gets smaller. And the upper layer moves down. So now we're adding the bicarbonate to the reaction mixture and notice that there is a little bit of fizzing. Okay. And then to mix, because we're not going to put our thumb over it and shake, we're going to basically draw up one layer and expel it into the other layer so that they can thoroughly mix. So you can draw up the lower layer, drop, drop it into the upper layer and do that a few times. Then you can draw the upper layer and expel it into the lower layer a few times. Luckily, it's not making an emulsion. <laughs> yeah. With ether, it doesn't make that much. Okay, we'll do that until it stops fizzing a little bit. So now we're adding two milliliters of four molar sodium chloride. Yeah. Just, just 
yeah, more or less. It's yeah, it is uh, yeah. And mix as before. But, yeah. Not so much because yeah, we're gonna get emulsion unless we put it in the centrifuge. Well, we gotta mix it out though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> The, the interface looks cleaner though with the sodium chloride than it does, yes, yes, which yes, is yes. as it should be. Yes. Sodium chloride, remember, salting out is to get rid of water that might be dispersed in your organic layer. Okay, that looks a lot cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Okay. So now we'll remove the lower layer. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to video the tedious removal of the lower layer because you've now seen this. Filter through a little cotton. Shall I get cotton? I think or? we can just pipette it out. Okay. So, so we've added the drying agent and are now mixing it and you can see that the uh, layer is much clearer than it was before. A different So we've started boiling after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes of heating. Got a nice steady boil, but it's not reflexing yet. There's not much in the way of vapor making it up into here. Eventually the vapor will make its way up into the upper section. But for right now, the vapor really hasn't made it much past the thermometer bulb at the bottom. Right now it's, it's reflexing much sorry. better. You can see it's starting to fog up the sides here, and now it's starting to collect there. You can see very clearly that it's starting to collect, and we're going to need to remove from the side port very quickly here. What we don't want is that the well fills up and starts to dribble back, because then we're just having to redistill it again. So we're transferring the stuff through the port into the pre-weighed container. And you can see we've collected a fair amount of distillate there that Professor Ferretta is removing with great expertise. <laughs> we also need to watch that we're not evaporating to dryness, perhaps turning down the heat slightly so if the evaporation is going too quickly, we don't want to burn everything to a crisp in the bottom, which it looks like we just did. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, this is... Remember, this setup we has a Hickman distill, which is a little different than the regular distillation setup, in which here is a reaction vessel. In this case, the collecting is here, whereas in the other case, the collecting is somewhere else.